Hello everyone, I'm Marina and it's a Grammar School. Today is a very special video, since my model got her fingers frostbitten as a kid, and as a result, now her nails look different. Our task is to transform them. Let's get into it. So here are today's nails. If we take a closer look, we will see that on the left hand, the nails are nice and even, and on the right hand, the nails are deformed. It might seem that the model turned them off, but that's not it. Now let me tell you a story of what really happened to my model's hands. When she was 3 years old, playing on the playground in winter, she put a snowball into her mitten and kept it there for a while. Then she spent a long time in the freezing cold, which resulted in a bad frostbite. When she came home, it did not occur to her relatives to put her hand into some cold water first. They put it into hot water, which is strictly forbidden, as it turns out. Now, thanks to my model story, I learned about it too. Eventually, her nails deformed, and the skin got dry and cracked. It is thin like papyrus. It feels like it may fall to pieces being touched. So, I want to help my model out as much as I can. I removed the coating, and now I need to polish the nails to remove its leftovers. Since the nails are shorter here, I will need to extend them to make sure that two hands look the same. I'm using a new file today, testing it out. It has got a reusable base, which can be sterilized. I will do an e-file manicure today. The nail plate is set deeply, which is a common practice for deformed nails. So, I'm using a red flame drill bit, 0.21 in diameter. I'm sure you will agree that the nails look rather weird now. They darkened a bit. So, when I asked my model about it, she said that recently she had been using henna. And it stained her nails. There is almost no cuticle here and a long distal fold. So, I will file it with an e-file instead of using a cutting tool. The model is rather insecure about her hands. She prefers nude, not too eye-catching shades. She's afraid to show off this hand. Her skin is sweating, so I put some drying powder to dehydrate it and keep the drill bit from getting clogged. To polish the cuticle, I'm using a rounded cone drill bit. It is also new for me. It definitely reminds a rounded cylinder, but due to this angled part, there is a lower chance to cut the skin. I have chosen the red drill bit in order not to injure, but even such light moves may slightly overfile the skin here, so even a professional nail tech should watch out. Done with the manicure? Now let's shape the nails. On this hand, there will be a gel polish coating, and on the other hand, I will extend the free edge. First, I degreased the nail plate to prepare it for sculpting. I did not remove the free edge that much. Using a micro brush soaked in some degreaser, I clean up the sinuses and the cuticle zone. I can't remove this henna from under the nail, 
since it's stained it. I apply primer cause the previous coating did not last well. There were multiple liftings. And I'm using a Hema free rubber base coat as an underlay. It suits people with allergies. And here is why I have chosen it. We can see that the skin is super dry and cracked, so it may get irritated after the contact with the material. That's exactly why the skin looks the way it looks right now. So in order not to risk my model's health, I'd better use a softer base coat. This is a low acidity base coat by Kinetics. Make sure to use a primer first. Now I cut out forms guiding by the shape of the free edge. Make cuts to keep the form from opening and the nails from getting trapezoidal. I will use plastic forms in order to apply them multiple times. And some jelly gel for sculpting. Beginners hate this material, because it's hard to align. But pros love it. It doesn't flow at all and keeps the shape you put it into. It is not as thick as Acrygel, which makes it perfect for forming underlays. But plastic forms tend to open, so here is a life hack. Once I have pressed the form, I put a metal clip on it from the bottom to keep it tight and send the nail to cure with the clip on. We don't change the natural growth pattern with the form. The nails should not be arched. They should look natural, just like the ones on the other hand. The ring nail is curved. The previous nail tag added more material on the free edge, trying to fix it. And the nail got too thick, which I want to avoid this time. So I set up the form upward and cure it like this. Just cover it up with the lamp to keep it from falling. Now set it up on the next nail and continue the layout. It is super convenient to use a measuring tool to compare the length with the other hand and build it up if needed. Now cure it for 30 seconds. Done with the underlays. I remove the tacky layer and shape the free edge. Filing this thin underlays. I slightly polish the surface to strengthen it with gel using a quick no filing technique later. We will shape a soft square, so I slightly round up the corners. The model told me that this ring nail gets different every time. But a little spoiler for you, she liked this result because this time the nail got thinner than usual. Now degrease and remove all the dust. And on the index nail, there is a gap that I'd better fill in with the material first, cure it in the lamp, and then move on to the sculpting layer. Cause it's hard to fill in this gap and build up the architecture correctly at the same time. I have cured it in the lamp and let's clip it like this. We don't clip it too hard here, because otherwise we may even worsen the nail condition. Now I carefully apply the sculpting gel in three moves, then put a bigger drop on the apex and spread it. I can't remember what gel I was using here, but looking at it now, I love the color. I guess it's the one by option. The metal nail is a bit bulky, so I touch it up. Filing helps to make it thinner and narrower. 
since my model prefers nude shades and avoids bold colors. Though, I think she should try wearing brighter colors as well. But here we decided to keep it nude and natural, and covered it up with a glossy non-tacky top coat. But that's not it yet. I just could not let her go without some skincare. When I see dry hands of my models, I want to give them some proper care. So, in order to seal the cracked skin over the cuticle, I will put some cuticle wax on it. I grab some with a green silicone carbide drill bit. It is medium hard. The speed is 5 to 7000 RPM. In the reverse position, I polish the cuticle moving from left to right. Next, I apply some moisturizing lotion with massage and moves to let it nourish the skin. At this point, we can see all the blood vessels and capillaries on the hands. And the next step is this amazing paraffin cream. It kinda seals water inside the skin which keeps it moisturized longer. So I grab some with a spatula and spread it. There is no need to use it on the palms, because the skin is softer there usually. Not that dry, so we keep it as it is. I put on disposable plastic bags and gloves. Now let's set up a timer and wait for 15 minutes. It's time to take off the gloves and pull the bags off together with the cream leftovers. Now throw it away since it is not reusable. I wipe off the excess with a lint-free tissue on both hands. This cold paraffin cream is perfect for regular at-home nail care. It will nicely moisturize the skin. So with time, it will get less dry and more polished. And here's the final look. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like the transformation in my opinion, the result looks really nice. Check out my other videos about complex cases, but I wish you all avoid them in your practice. Good luck! Bye-bye!